Okay, we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into the weekly NFL show for BTB Analytics. Kevin, Seth, and Steve back with you as usual. A little late for the stream. Apologies, our college football episode went a little late, but we are all good. So um, hopefully we'll get some we'll get some uh, fellow fellow uh, DJs and followers in here following, um, going along with us for this ride. Um, week. 10 in the nfl pretty pretty wild so we got a lot of good matchups to break down as usual some data some best bets model predictions all the good stuff you know it let's get into it let's start the show give a damn about a hater when i feel like it not today not today not today not tomorrow get out my way please i'm trying to get paid not today all righty all righty all righty welcome in everyone uh hey hey cats on horses shout out nice name i love that hey hey what's going on man um all right we got to jump in boys we got a lot we got a lot of good matchups to talk about this week let's just go right into thursday night football potentially best one of the year maybe potentially cincinnati Bengals and the baltimore ravens uh this one this one should be good we don't have an official play on this one model leans to Bengals on this one we make the number five uh, but this one, this one, Steve is like a clash of styles, really, because mm-hmm. um, the Bengals are number two in the league in pass rate over expected, and Baltimore's number twenty nine. You got one team who just loves to air it out. I don't know if they're doing it by necessity, but then obviously on the flip side, Baltimore just running the rock with King Henry. I think he's, I think he already has a thousand yards, if I saw that correctly. So he, it's crazy what he's doing over there. Yeah. Um, and then one other thing, and I want to get your get your take on it too, like clash of styles. But then defensively speaking, the Bengals in this one are the second worst team in the league in EPA per rush allowed. So I, I how 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 complicated is this, is this one really? Then just give give the King twenty five plus totes, and Baltimore walks away with this one. Yeah, I, and then this is one. God, I, I'm gonna love watching this game. And quite frankly, you can you can talk me out of betting either side or betting on either side, really, because like you said, this is a clash of styles, and not just you know what these teams like to do, but what the opposing defense is bad at stopping. Right? I mean, you talk about how Cincinnati is really bad at stopping the run. We've been talking about it all season. Baltimore is really bad at stopping the pass, which doesn't bode well for a team. Who likes to throw the ball and um, you know as Joe Cool does. So yeah, I'm with you. I mean, if, if the Baltimore Ravens are going to have a, a legitimate shot this game, you're going to have to stay on down. You're going to have to feed King Henry the rock. But what they've been doing really well is, even though they may be running Lamar a little bit less than the years past, they're really good at getting their receivers, their, you know, Zay Flowers, things like that, involved in the run game as well. So I think for me, it's yeah, run the ball get creative running the ball and do that all damn day and leave open those shots for Lamar to hit up the receivers. Now the question is going to be, can they stay in that, in that mode when they can stay on down, they can afford to run the ball all day and not have to force Lamar to throw the ball. I think we've seen Baltimore be a little bit better on both sides of the balls overall recently. Um, And so I kind of like their chances. And again, you know, this is one, I believe I forgot what week that was, but um, this was the um, this was the miracle game, right? Because we were yeah. on Baltimore last time. This is the miracle. They had no business to win that game. Got it to overtime, and then you know Derrick Henry did his damn thing. So um, hard to beat a divisional uh, foe twice, but yeah. yeah, I like Baltimore chances. Yeah, the the only thing, one other thing I had too is Seth. Um, Baltimore is, and we, I know this isn't particularly something that we use or feel is you know incredibly predictive, but it's it's noteworthy, I think, from a couple different perspectives. Baltimore is last in the league in allowing explosives in the past game. They 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 have like I think it's like thirty two explosive plays already. And Baltimore, or excuse me, Bengals on the flip side are one of the worst teams in generating explosives. I don't know if they're going to get T Higgins back. Um, he's been out a couple of games, but even you know is, is that one is that is that a cure is this is that perfect storm for for Bengals to to get right and kind of maybe play upset in this one and, and take down the ravens and going up against that pass defense who is susceptible basically to to the big plays and and yeah can joe burrow just do his thing like coming off a five touchdown week you know is this yeah. is there enough there for him to keep it rolling so two things i mean the market has been buying the six and a half uh plus six and a half for Bengals. so this is now sitting at six uh, our model points in that direction um someone in the chat was saying they're all going to be on cincinnati 
I think that's probably the right play here, in my opinion, on a side. We're not playing it. The edge is just too small. But where there is smoke, there's fire. And pass funnels, baby. Baltimore <laughs> couldn't be more of a pass funnel than they're like literally the archetype for pass funnels. And what do you know? Bengals more greater than average EPA per play, and they're about average in matchups. This team is a team that is passing the ball 4% more than an average team. Their pass rate over expected is, again, 4%. What do you know? When you run the Sims, Joe Burrow over 23 or 24 receptions, EV all day. Um, completions, yeah. Or sorry, completions all day. So I think you're probably – it depends on how conservative you want to be. I think I'd probably look at this DraftKings uh, over 20 and a f 24 and a half um, completions minus 105 versus laying the 128. Um, I think this team is going to throw the hell out of the ball. Now, obviously, um, that 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 correlates with explosives. Um, I've never looked in the NFL about explosives from what I've seen in college. It doesn't actually bear any fruit. It's not predictive. It's more explanatory. But I think this is the angle in this game. Joe Burrow, maybe you can look at some of the wide receivers, targets, or yards. Um, but I think I like the – you could see three and one. And that one loss was the Detroit game where they yeah. by 50 and they had to pull the starters in the fourth quarter. <laughs> and he ended – we had over 12 and a half carries, and he had 12 carries. So he did that in three quarters. So this methodology pinpoints – what teams are looking at, right? They have the same data we we do. And in a short week, I think a, ten, a team is going to tend to do what they already do. And in this case, the Bengals are a team that throws the ball. So um, I say all that. I think that's the better bet. I definitely will be um, having some of those Burrow um, completions for sure. Okay. You heard it here on live. Yeah. Maybe. A little, little, little free play action for you guys on the, in the chat there. Yeah. yeah I, think, shut up. I think if DraftKings will let me, I'll, I'll, I'll take the, I'll take that, uh, over 24 and a half minus 105. Yes. Shout out. Yeah, it should be a good one. Should be another fun matchup finally. I think uh last last where what that, no, what was, that was a Halloween matchup. Oh yeah, that Jets game wasn't very good. But uh yeah, this one should be this one should be fun. Market is expecting I think those explosives generally speaking to to kind of come to fruition. I think this is over unders at like 50, if I'm not mistaken. Jets game wasn't good, but we 53 covered three and a half. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So market is expecting points in this one. Yeah. What were you but saying, how, Seth? How about them? I said that the Thursday night game last week wasn't good, but we covered. So that makes it that makes yeah. it one of the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. And All right. One of the moving best on. Of the season. Yeah, Don't think I would have seen it if, uh, unless I was. Yeah. Street Street Impala saying he just locked it in. Uh, Joe Burrow over completion. Shout out. The skated boys. Boys Shut and up. girls. All right. Let's move on from Thursday night football. Let's go on to another matchup on the Sunday slate here. We're going Pittsburgh Steelers and the Washington Commanders. Um, again, a little lean from from the mouse perspective on the Steelers here. Um, we made the number two. Uh, let's see. He's cast on under. Oh, sorry. Um, but I guess it, is anyone, Seth, you in particular, I'm looking at you just because in the past we've had these conversations about Washington. Are are we finally are we finally on the same page as as uh, I don't know I guess the rest of the world basically and that this, this team is legit or is there still a reason to think that okay maybe pump the brakes maybe regression is 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 on the horizon here No I guess we're not on the same page I mean our model has <laughs> Pittsburgh winning this game uh, by two points uh, so I. I, the, the, the reality is I'll walk through you through the numbers. Washington is a good team. No doubt about it. Number two in pass, number two in rush on offense. And then defensively, they struggle a bit more, but they're a little bit more average. Washington 15th stopping the pass, 24th stopping the rush. But what is the one trend that you've seen with Washington? They struggle against that next level of tier. And in, 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 in NFL, it's not talent. Whatever you want to call it, that next tier of NFL team and specifically defenses we've seen this struggle we've seen this team struggle against baltimore they couldn't cover a six and a half point spread we saw this team struggle against chicago i'm sorry about the ending of that game oh, steve man. but you know the, the defense defensively chicago had success there they didn't just mm -hmm. do whatever they wanted to do in that game and what does pittsburgh do well here i can't comment on offensive efficiency them being an elite team but defensively pittsburgh is an elite defense and so I do agree with the model here that this seems to be the recipe where we see Washington see quote unquote be normal. 
And quite frankly, the only reason we aren't losing or winning money depends on who you ask against Washington is because we're using priors. And unfortunately for Washington commanders, they were dog shit last year. And so those priors make this team be pretty bad. But there's still a rookie quarterback. And I I am not sure. lining up yet to I mean, what is their ATS record? Yeah, I would love to know. I'm not sure. But oh, but just yes, while well, Steve's getting mad, just in this one, I mean, the, the market just today has already moved to to three. Um, so pretty much three is across the board now, uh, up from two and a half. So it's early, 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 um, early movement towards Washington, early fools. I guess. Early. Uh, Washington ATS uh, seven, one and one this year. Seven, seven one, one and one. So we, yeah. Okay. Okay. So here, so hear me out. That one is Baltimore. And we bet against them. So we're 100% betting on <laughs> or against them. Like, we haven't got this wrong. We're like, we're not actively betting against this team. And yeah. they're kicking our ass. We're just not betting on them. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. To, uh, Adams, I, I, did I take them more than once? He says, I've, I've, I've taken them. I picked them a lot. Maybe on off the numbers. Maybe yeah, you off the numbers. Yo, yeah, 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 you've been blazing them all year. What do you mean that I take them more than once? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and but to, but jokes to on us because you you're winning You've been yeah, winning. yeah. And, and but 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 i think i think broadly i think the point it was twofold one to Seth's point about you know how much of the priors affect what you're seeing this season with the numbers and when you have a team goes going that goes from really shitty to all of a sudden really good off the charts particularly on one side of the ball offensively there's some things that could be missed you know w w with the model but then secondarily too with rookie quarterbacks in particular, yeah. you have generally speaking just high variance outcomes. Like it's it's difficult for rookies to succeed generally, but you have in any given class one or two that's really going to probably outperform. Um, and, and this has just been just kind of the perfect storm of both of those things. You have really mismatched priors with the commanders and a rookie quarterback who is just outperforming expectation. Well, frankly. let me and also I don't actually I take it back. I don't think we do have mismatched priors. Washington offensive EPA in the last 15 games, 10th in our database. They're the 10th best offense. Well, we're, the, I mean, we're, 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 we're 10 games into the season now, though. You know, so we got 10 games of. Yeah, 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 of course. So I'm, I'm saying the, the priors are kind of more accurate on who this team is, in my opinion. And defensively, we have them 25th. So I don't yeah. think the priors are really all that inaccurate. Again, I, they're seven and one. I'm surprised to hear that. Um, but, but again, we, we're not actively betting against them. We're just not betting right. on them. And the one time we bet against yeah. them, we covered. Yeah, I think I think I think you might see a CJ like this is a CJ Stroud track. Like the regression is probably not going to hit until the playoffs or maybe even next year, which would suck because that is when Daniels will flip <laughs> right. to non rookie. And yeah. Yeah. so look, I mean, put my, buckle up. If these guys are the real buckle deal, up, field, we will yeah. be betting on them soon. Yeah. No, I think that's good. And, you know, and to that point, you know, we talk about the commanders and what they've been doing here. And, yeah, you know, we talk about how great their offense is. But you look at, you know, where they struggle or what other teams can do, because one of their Achilles heel has been that defense. And while they have been slowly getting better over the year, you kind of have to look at their opponents, right? I mean, you know, they're dominating the likes of the Giants, the Browns, the Panthers, the Bears, and the Giants again – who all I think we can all agree here objectively have bad offenses. They had a really good win against the Bengals, but that was really early yeah. on to the year. The Bengals, I mean, what they started was it zero and three? They started. Um, they, that's, that's a different team. They're really kind of uh, you know kind of finding their uh, their stride there. And then like Seth mentioned, the one time they did uh, uh, play against a pretty elite offense in the Ravens, you know, we were on the Ravens and they ended up covering that uh, that six. Uh, I think we had there, so they won by six seven. Six so, and a half. Yeah, it was yeah. less than a, less than a under yeah. So. Position. Right. Right. 100%. So I, you know, I guess I see all that to say, you know, we have seen them put up points and we have seen that offense like the scoreboard. I think Steelers are a different breed, a different category as we talk about their splits, especially on the defensive end with pass and rush. We know pass is what the commanders love to do. But again, let's not sleep on the Steelers offense. I mean, we've talked about this multiple times on this podcast. They are sneakily efficient. It may not look pretty, but that's what they get done. And now with the rust back there, um, you know, as someone who's been a Justin Fields supporter as a Bears fan, I mean, Russ is doing what he needs to do um, with that offense. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you all the way, Seth. You know, this is one of the ones that I think as a fan, you know, the, the, the trendy pick is, oh, commanders are doing so yeah. great. But this is why you use data in a model. And I think the it, it, it's pretty spot on here. Three and we'll and a half. If, if it gets to three and a half before tomorrow, which is not going to, we'll, we'll, yeah. we will bet that. I will bet mm -hmm. that. We'll be yeah. giving yeah. that out.
Yeah, that, so. that'd be a, that'd be a big. That's a big number. So, okay, sounds good. Yeah, I'm I'm fascinated to see what what they do against the what, against the Steelers D for sure. So should be should yeah. be a good one. Yeah, All right, and Chad, move on. Chad, I think that's kind of exactly what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, Chad. Uh, yeah, running up the record against the weak division, weak opponents. Yep. So. All right, let's move on to a potentially interesting one. I don't know from an injury standpoint if there's much to do about nothing here, but we'll see. Broncos and the Kansas City Chiefs. So full disclosure, we'll talk about it later. We're on Chiefs minus eight and a half uh, in this one. Mahomes hurt his ankle, I believe it was, he's and then fine. he came back he's in. Fine. Like he's probably like the Taylor Swift like voodoo magic just like healed him instantaneously. You know, it's just <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on over there. So yeah, he gets injured and he just stays in. So. Yeah, we'll we'll see how how much this affects his play, but um, yeah, the 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 one thing talking about the commanders and going up the, against the defenses and the teams that they have, I I didn't get a chance to double fact check to this. Maybe you guys have the have it or, or can confirm here, but the Broncos are one of the best pass passing defenses in in the league. I have them as that number four against the pass, but kind of mediocre average uh, against the against the rush here. So. Um, I, I don't hate this. I don't hate this play or I don't hate the value here. I mean, Mahomes is inevitable as we all kind of know. And if, if, if they might just already be talking about going for the undefeated shit, going for the undefeated streak, man, I don't know. So it's, it should be, it should be fascinating. I'm, yeah, I just don't, am not really sold on what, um, the Broncos have going on. And again, with another rookie quarterback there, you're just going to have a lot of inconsistent play there. So I say all that. Seth, let me get your take on it because I do I, with the Mahomes potential injury and given where the Broncos are defensively, um, I will be keeping an eye on a couple of props that I want to just briefly talk about. Yeah, I mean, to your point, Denver's defense has been very good this year, but it's almost a similar idea about Washington. They've done and had that elite kind of performance against these lower tier teams. Mm -hmm. You saw what happened when they went against one of the most efficient offenses last week, and you know they they couldn't do much stopping that. And I, you know, this is a divisional game, so I don't want to overplay this. But yeah, I wrote in the notes: Mahomes is inevitable. He somehow continually outplays his statistics. He's done this over and over. He reminds me a lot. Um, well, he reminds me a lot of himself. He's Patrick Mahomes. He's the goat right now. But he reminds me right now a lot of Joe Burrow in twenty. Was that 2020 or 2021 when they went to the Super Bowl? Where statistically speaking, Cincinnati was just playing out of their mind. Like you, you should have mathematically faded them in every single one of their games, and they just were inevitable. And and it feels very much this way. The other thing too is Denver is struggling offensively. Bo Nix is, I don't know, I'm I'm not the coach there, but he is right now two point negative two point nine expected points added per game so i mean he is costing that offense points versus an average quarterback so i don't know he's obviously a quarterback he needs to you know he's, he's learning he's growing i don't know if this is the game to do it against this defense because this this team is is elite and you saw what tampa bay could do but i think baker is in a different stratosphere than bo Nix. Yeah, 100%. And this is my conspiracy theory here. I don't know if you guys watched that play when he went down, but there was a camera angle when Mahomes tweaked down and they were looking, their, his teammates came to pick him up. And he's like, I'm fine. And then he got up and then they, they, they did the whole thing. They walked him off and then he was jogging. I'm completely convinced that he was just milking that injury to get the crowd kind of into it. Kind of like what LeBron does, if we're being honest here. So, yeah, I, I don't think – I don't think the the injury thing is going to be an angle here personally, but, you know, we'll see what happens on the injury report. But I'm with you, Seth. I mean, you know, we talk about this team and, you know, outside of that one, again, unfortunately for us, that one beat down against Tampa Bay, this Denver Broncos team yeah. really has not looked good when you go up against good passing offenses. And again, we used Baltimore last week as an example where, you know, again, they put up 41 points. So, uh, yeah, I, I do expect more of the same. And, and the, the one thing I have here, we talked about it last week, and we saw it come to fruition a little bit. But again, DeAndre Hopkins looked pretty damn good in that offense, right? Yeah. And so now you give him another week with the playbook. I mean, he had a critical uh, kind of – call it a, a, a bad route late in the game uh, when they were trying to drive to hit the game-winning field goal in regulation where he didn't stop and Mahomes you know, wanted him to stop there. That stuff's going to be buttoned yeah. up as the weeks go on. So this offense is only going to get better. Mahomes is only going to get more inevitable. So I, I love the spot yeah. here, especially against a rookie quarterback. 
Yeah, and we'll we'll, we'll see. I'll, we'll keep an. I'm going to keep a close eye on the uh, injury report this week for him. And if he doesn't end up with an injury designation, then I think all bets are off on this one, so to speak, for from my perspective. But if he does have one, I can just only imagine that everyone's going to be in his ear about playing it safe. You know, not trying to scramble, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, I yeah, disagree. I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, I disagree. Really? I mean, we 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 we've seen Mahomes battle lower lower injury uh lower leg injuries all throughout his career and that's what he he still scrambles he still goes for the first down i forgot what it was called but there was a um the documentary quarterback uh on netflix where they had like uh, it was him and um uh, uh what's his face marcus Mariota, all that stuff and Mahomes talks about all this pt agility work that he does to do that i i i, I could be wrong here but i highly disagree kev i think that's a that's a bad bad tree you're barking up Okay, maybe maybe You're maybe it is under 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 like rushing attempts or rushing yards. I I was I was mainly going to hit it from the perspective of over rushing attempts for the running backs. Like oh okay, so they're going to uh, share. Yeah, yeah. I think the I think the share of carries, or I think they'll maybe lean on that a little more um, and try to I mean, protect him from that perspective, particularly if the game script kind of plays out from the standpoint of if they're going to cover double digit spread effectively, then why why you know lay him out in harm's way so we'll see again i'm gonna i'm gonna monitor it you know it's kind of an injury angle kind of um secondary arbitrage angle but we'll see we're early so in the week I, still, so i don't see up. a world where there's any advantage to not have him on that report oh yeah yeah I, I guess i guess you're i guess that makes a lot of sense yeah just keep him on there so to yeah speak. Wh- whether he's actually injured yeah. or he's yeah. not injured like <laughs> there's yeah. no advantage yeah. to be like no actually he's fine like um, to your point, uh, some validity of that angle, Kevin. I mean, this team's run pass rate over expected 0. 0.003. So what does that mean? It means this team is extremely yeah. balanced. They're yeah. they're throwing and running at a very balanced rate. So if you're going to get one, two, three, four extra rushes, that could be the difference. So mm-hmm. um, I, I, I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards Steve's opinion. I don't know that it actually is meaningful, but for the angle you're trying to approach it, you know, you could... If you just got two extra rushes, that might cash something. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So we'll see how it goes. But like, like I said, early in the week, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, uh, go Chiefs, though. Let's go undefeated. Why not? Let's All right, boys. Chiefs. Let's move on down the line how would here. They do? I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> something like that, probably. Okay. Yeah. Uh... All right. Let's move on before I someone gets in trouble. All right, Lions. And the Texans, how about it? Next matchup here. Again, another another model play that we're on. We're on Houston oh, plus man. three and a half. I hear the vomit in the background. Yeah. I felt the same way. We we felt collectively felt the same way last week about Tampa Bay. Yes. A very similar kind True. of situation, though, right? Because yes. Texans now down Diggs, down Collins. Tampa Bay was down Evans and down Chris Godwin and a couple of other issues going on, right? And what did yeah. Tampa Bay do? They just go out and cover against the Chiefs. So... So yes, I, I don't disagree with the visceral feeling. Like it's 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 ugly. It it, it doesn't feel right. Um, but this the, the the what actually makes me want to actually vomit with this one as opposed to last week is the quarterback play here. Believe it or not, Baker Mayfield is outplaying C.J. Stroud this year. Oh, I believe um, it. And yeah, and and by a relatively comfortable margin, Baker's a top ten EPA per play quarterback. C.J. Stroud's like. 20th um i hate the model here says cats on horses yeah no i we we come across these spots every every so often so and they usually you're, cover you're not alone we, we, need, not alone. we need a cover rate like of oh, games yeah. we hate what is the actual cover rate is it's yeah. probably like 60 plus percent <laughs> yeah yeah so not only again not only in this one seth is Diggs and collins out which those two combine account for a 37 percent target share yeah. when they were when they were on the field together now they're potentially down will anderson jr they're their top edge rusher um which is a big deal for Goff, who's a you know pocket passer only effectively so um again we show value here on the texans but what do you think the game script is given those factors for 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 texas to pull out the cover here yeah well i mean once you start looking under the hood here you kind of it kind of just three and a half in an nfl game is just a lot um, but I want to point that you talked about um, Mayfield better than Stroud. But one thing I thought was interesting in our 10 game EPA sample, which is something that drives our model, 
Goff is 5.8 points added per game. Stroud is still at 3.1 points added per game. So these this is not some terrible difference in quarterback play in that last 10 game sample. Um, and uh, I think that that's compounded by if you look at CJ Stroud's home um, and uh, away splits, he plays much, much, much better home. Um, and I think that that's potentially driving the model here a bit. Yeah. Um, I've run, I ran this numbers with, you know, the quarterback, you know, our rookie methodology removed using every single one of his games. You get the same number if you remove, or if, and then if you use the, our rookie methodology, you get, you get zero both times. So, I mean, it's more stable in a larger sample size, and then it's more stable in our, or it's, you get the same thing in our normal forecast. Look, it feels gross. It does, but I think Houston's defense hopefully can step up, and I think that's really this game is you're going to, it's just going to be a ground and pound game, a lot of running the ball, and, you know, Detroit wins by three. It feels when's gross, the, guys. When's I, the last I, time Detroit I, won by three? They're fucking winning by 30 and 40 and shit this year. Well, they've lost twice, haven't they? Uh, they've lost once. Well, somebody's going to have to fact check. So yeah, uh, yeah. Um, all right, they're going to lose this game, and so I'm think I'm already... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go, 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 go. Finish your thought. I was just going to say, so some interesting, you know, behind the behind the scenes here. So we bet the games early Monday morning rather than late Sunday night. And this opened at three and a half and got bought at all of the books to three. And so we didn't initially right. give it out because three yeah. and a half wasn't available. And that's where pretty much all yeah. the EV comes from. Yeah. They've only lost one game and they lost to the Bucks week two. That's crazy. Yeah. So, but then yeah. today the market Sorry. bought it back to three and a half. It's too immature of a market for us to not buy it, especially because if we would have bet it on Sunday night, we would have just been right where we where we would have been. So we had to give it out. We did bet it. It's gross. It's gross. But we've had early market agree with us. Now the little bit more mature market disagrees with us. Sure. Um, but you know we're we're in a little bit of company here. We're not on an island. True. Yeah. And the uh, Lions just traded for that pass rusher from the Browns. You know, how much play does he get? Oh, man. There's just a lot of things that, yeah. Yeah. Lining uh, up to be fucking. It could be bad. One of those weeks. It could be bad. It's just one out of six games. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. I, I, I have nothing for you guys here. I, I have nothing uplifting or positive to say. Yeah. I mean, you know, last. I mean, again, we did say last week, you know, we, we were in the same spot. We were on Bucks plus nine. And the the whole thing was, oh, man, you know, no, no, uh, no Chris Godwin, no Mike Evans, but you know we saw the Buccaneers in the week prior. You know, really feed Kate out in the ball, get Bucky Irvin more involved, etc. But man, this one, I, I really can't make that argument. Um, I mean, I'm on it, right? It's gross, uh, and it's just for me. It's like I, the one thing I have trouble with too, Seth, is you know I, I do think it has to be that kind of ground and pound game, but. Yeah, yeah. Houston's defense is better against the run, but the Lions are still pretty damn yeah. elite yeah. Yeah. at running the ball. So you know, yeah. what do you even do there? Um, you know, I mean, I, I'm with you though. When we hate these bets collectively across the board, those are the ones that tend to cover more often than not. So I'm hoping the trend continues here. Should be it should be another good primetime game though. This is a this is a Sunday night game as well. So should be should be a fun one at least. But. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If, and the positive here is if it's a blow up by Detroit, I get to go bed early. So I don't have to stay up and be tortured by it. So it's, a, it's actually a win win. All right. Another, another shout out, Michael. He was in our college, uh, college football um, podcast as well, stream. And another decent question here Do you ever hold off on placing wagers because you feel like it's going to move in your favor? It's a million dollar question, Michael. We hear that from time to time. The answer is. You never know what the market is going to do, basically. You can kind of, and you can think you know what's what's going to happen, and you can be somewhat anticipatory maybe because of injury news or whatever, but you you just never know what the market is going to do, frankly. And I think there's going to be spots where you could probably pick a game or two and you're, yeah, you get ahead of the curve, but you, it's going to even out probably in the long run. You're going to pick games where you think you, you think it's going to come back to you and you can wait to bet it, but it never does. And then you miss out on EV. So that's my that's my two cents on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'd answer that. I'd answer it this way, which is that remember, remember what realistic CLV looks like 55 to 60 percent of your games you're betting. So 
you're better off just betting all of your games and then measuring CLV to see 55 or 60 percent rather than trying to also then forecast which games are going to would actually give you negative CLV and then get a better number. I mean, this whole like, you know, uh, what is it? You know, bet a uh, bet, bet favorites early, bet dogs late. Like, I think that that's a relative rule of thumb for d- betters that have no sophistication to them. But for something like us, where we have a forecast relative to a number, we just need to act on that number versus like, oh, well, we think the omnipotent market's going to do this. We'll wait. If we knew that, then we knew, we would have more information than the model. Like it just, right. It's just, you get in your head too much. That's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, again, we- I want to say, Oh, I was going to say real quick, I, I used again last week as an example, right? You had, you know, Buccaneers down the top two receivers. You had the DeAndre Hopkins news. Andy Reid came out, you know, kind of around the time replacing the bed, saying that he is going to have Hopkins more involved in offense. And after we got that, I mean, I think I, I dipped from uh, Bucks plus nine to plus eight and a half. And then it came back yeah. and settled at nine. So I think that's one of those games where. Ended up closing at eight, but like yeah. right before kick. So it's like. Yeah, never in a million years would I have thought that would have been the line movement, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to, yeah, yeah. And then Michael, last last thing, you know, in, in the current iteration of the NFL model, like it's 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 very difficult, borderline impossible to be competitive in a mature like no. later in the week at close, you know. And our model cannot do that. So the later you get in the week, the more information is available, the more the one percent of betters who have the most sophisticated models are betting into these markets and you, you are then betting on information that is not in your model. Um, and therefore I can tell you, I can be, I, one thing I can tell you basically if all of the games are still available on game day, we're going to have a bad week. Our model <laughs> our well, not necessarily a bad week, but it's going to be hard to be profitable at close pretty much consistently our model will do pretty much like 49 to 50 percent we what we add to the market is engulfed by wednesday by a long shot like so there's just basically our angle comes from quarterback play we we model quarterback play in a specific way and that's where we get our angle by wednesday other things engulf that angle injuries being one of them but i would challenge you as a better you you have to be insanely you i'm going to be a little bit offensive you have to be more sophisticated than you are with a 99% certainty to quantify injury edges in the nfl you can't believe how sophisticated that needs to be and so i challenge you to start betting it open you're going to probably see a lot more wins yep so good question michael appreciate it appreciate it yeah there's always a lot of nuance to these type of things so but appreciate the appreciate the discourse okay that was sunday night football let's do one more matchup huh Monday night, Monday night, Dolphins against the Rams. Another one that we're on. We're on LA minus two on this one. So um, our number made it four or makes it four. I think this is still at two. Let me just verify. Two and a half. Two and a half. So really now across the yep. board. So yeah, early, early, early right side. But yeah, this one, um, this one for me, you know, we talked a little, we talked about it in one of the earlier matchups. I forget which one exactly, but this idea of um, priors in a rolling game sample says that we use. Mentioned it a little bit last week, too, with Miami, because there's been how many games now in the past 10 or 15 games with Tua not as the starter for Miami? Four? I think it was four this season and none last season. Exactly. And Okay, yeah. So, so to the extent, Seth, do you think any of the edge that we're picking up is still kind of overcompensating for that element of it? Not really, because when we look at EPA per play for quarterback, that's just relative to the games they've played and the plays they've played. So, you know, two is not getting punished for that. And then when we look, we use our quarterback uh, category again, only contributing to games he has played. So, no, I don't. And and quite frankly, looking under the hood, two his numbers are concerning. He's negative three points um, expected points added per game in the last ten games. I mean, that's quite interesting. Now. Miami has had to rely on the run quite a lot this season, and it makes sense. I think that's because they've had a lot of you know interesting right. quarterback play, including when Tua went down. But uh, you'll see there eleven. Interesting is is a euphemism. It's been it's been shitty. Yeah, yeah, it's been shitty, and and they've been running the ball basically eleven percent more, 
um, than an average team, which again makes sense given their you know their their opportunities there at quarterback. I I mean, look, we saw this team wake up a bit against a divisional opponent in in Buffalo, but quite frankly, other than if they don't get that interception at the goal line, does that scoreboard look quite differently? And that's one play that's highly levered. Um, I like I like this play, which. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I, 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 I think I think the Rams are playing quite well, especially when Nakua and Copper in that lineup. Hopefully, uh, Puka yeah, doesn't that's... go sh- throwing any more fists this week and get ejected. But <laughs> I, I, I like this matchup for LA's offense against Miami's defense. Yeah, Steve, I think that's probably one of the key factors in this one, right? Because yeah, presumably Puka Nakua doesn't do any stupid shit, and he's available for a full the full game. Cooper Cup another game back, and and him and Stafford in that connection. Um, Rams are a top five offense in terms of success rate. Um, so they, 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 they're just churning and burning. Like they're, they're, they're sustaining drives and Miami is, I don't know exactly where they, where they rank, but you can kind of see, you can, okay. Yeah. So they have, they have a negative, um, expected points on defense. So they're better than average, but, um, yeah, I think the, I think LA has added in a weird roundabout way via injuries and people come back and whatnot. They've added a lot of pieces and now might just be might just be hitting their stride. And the Dolphins, to assess point, I don't know if there's lingering issues or just what what's going on. Not enough time on the field together, but the Dolphins just yeah generally have not looked the same as they did last year. Yeah, and you know that that makes sense, right? And I think that you know we see a lot of people talk about how Miami's offense is looking better and quite frankly playing better than when you had you know all the backups in which is of course to be expected but you can say the same thing about la right i mean man, this is a team that was without for a stretch cooper cup and then didn't have puka nakua for a couple of games at the same time and now that you're seeing all those pieces back on the field together this offense is clicking so i think both of these teams offenses are on the, the upswing uh the difference here for me is that i, I trust la a little bit more um, to kind of put all the pieces together there. I mean, talk about their defensive struggles. But, you know, I think the one thing that Miami has going forward is because Tua was out and they couldn't run the – or they couldn't throw the ball, they had to rely on the run more and they had to get better at that. They're still pretty poor overall. We take a kind of a step back, but I think they have improved in the last couple of games. And I think that's where Tua's presence can really be felt to kind of open up those running lanes. But, you know, all things being said here, yeah, I think the upward trajectory is 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 on the Rams and they're a sneaky good team. Yeah, makes makes sense. I, I I agree with that generally. And just and just as a kind of a good segue, since uh, we're gonna one of our after the landscape, we're gonna go into off the numbers. But the fact that you do like this pick, Seth, might actually give me some some concern, just because you are dog shit. <laughs> You're okay, in the doghouse. But but but, but 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 I like it because the model likes it. Ah, mm. uh, the out. Yes. All right, save yourself. All right, look like it's like, it's like it's like I, I'm copying off the math test. Like I agree that the number is three, but the ma- but the like the 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 Google said it was three, and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Yeah. First, if, if you're like, what's the answer, Seth? I'd be like, I don't know. Miami's do baby. Bins up. <laughs> do theory. I love it. All right, let's hit zoom out. That's all the matchups we got for NFL this week to discuss. Let's um, take a look at the landscape here using EPA per play, both offensively and defensively. Um, talked about the commanders a little bit, like almost, almost, oh, not quite, almost breaking the chart in terms of the scale here. But um, Baltimore not really far behind. It's just crazy what they're what they're doing to. They look they look insane, insanely good. Um, but the the one the one team that or I. I one of the teams I want to get your guys' um, opinion on here is, excuse me, is the um, is the Jets. Now they've been kind of written off in in some respects already, but you know they're coming into Arizona this week. They're going against the Cardinals. I I don't know if that Houston game last week on on Thursday Night Football could have been maybe one of the jump off points for them, or do you guys think this team is still just basically mid as we're kind of showing them here? They 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 scare me a little bit. I think I think they might. I think they could catch a stride. Is basically what I'm getting at. I think they're not as bad as what their record indicates. To Steve, you want to go first? Yeah, I disagree. I think they are just as bad as their record indicates. I'm. 
<laughs> I just no, I, you, you can't really convince me otherwise. I mean, yeah, yes, I, you can. Okay, let's do it. Yes, you can argue that they've definitely underperformed given the pieces that they have on there. The Garrett Wilsons, the Sauce Gardeners, this and that. I, I get that. Sure. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think when you look at it, can they beat up on bad teams? Sure, but can they beat good teams? And we've seen them time and time again not be able to do that. They couldn't beat the Vikings. They couldn't beat the Bills. They couldn't beat the Steelers, right? And so then you throw in losses to the Patriots. To me, that's concerning, losses to the Broncos. So I, I don't know, man. I'm not sure how much they can get in their stride. Now, I'll give you this. They have you said, they have the Cardinals, the Colts. Um, but on the back end, they still have to play the Seahawks, the Dolphins, the Rams, the Bills, and the Dolphins again. So, no, okay. I don't think this team is going anywhere this year. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I... I, I'm a little not not bias isn't the word, but I'm I'm maybe I'm drinking a little bit of the hopium, I guess, just because um, you know got those positions for yeah. them for the for the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl future, which is sure. effectively I, almost at this point all but dead. Like the cash out value is like twenty percent. Yeah, you can get a better number now. Much yeah, better. for sure, much better. I I actually kind of agree with you, Kevin. Um, I think you've seen a lot of negative variance. If we go back to some of the games that they lost recently, you're talking missed PATs, um, you know, dropped catches. And even in that first half of that Thursday night game, it was kind of like, okay, here we go. It's going to be the same old bullshit. But then they got something together in that second half. Look, I, I don't know if they can get catch a fire, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but I think you have seen negative variance with this team. And just if they see a couple things bounce in their direction, that you're going to they're going to quote unquote look like a good team. Now, Steve, in your argument, I agree with most of it, but I do want to point out when you were listing those teams, you're like Vikings, Bills, forget the other team. Those are all good teams. Um, so, you know, as as the Jets are right now, an average team, I mean, OK, it's fair to lose against some of those teams. Um, obviously, that Denver loss looks pretty concerning right now, but I, I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be so surprised if they ended up winning, you know, more games than they lose in this like next four or five sample okay. but i don't know that i'm not i don't i don't think they're i don't think they're a deep you know super bowl contender oh sure. yeah yeah, I, I, yeah i'm not going that far i'm not i'm not delusional yeah. but yeah well I, I guess my my point was you know yeah to give them credit i, I don't think they're the ass of the ass like, i don't think they're the panthers or the giants <laughs> But I guess, you know, going up against a good team as a metric, I don't know what they're doing there. And I guess for me, that you know, they're three and six. Like, yeah, they're second in the AFC East, but they're three and six. The Bills are yeah. seven and two. And so yeah. you're looking at wild card at best, and you're going to have to beat some of those, you know, really good teams to get there. So I guess for me, that, that's kind of where my pessimism comes from. Yeah, and to put some numbers to this, the Giants have a bet more efficient – uh, overall offense in the Jets as of right now in our 15 games table. The Jets are negative 7.4, but the Giants are only negative 6.3. So mm. a, a point better than the Jets here in our samples. So insane. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I won't be surprised if we bet on them a couple more times this season. You're, if you can get Rodgers in the right spot, it's probably yeah. going to be good value just because the market's so sold on this team. Sure. Yeah. I would love to see what the number is against the Jaguars. I think for me, that's the one I'm like, that's Oh yeah, one. that's, that's a bet I can Dude. get behind the Jack. Yeah. We're going to talk. I'm about surprised. Here. Yeah. I'm surprised. Well, it's probably because they end up backdoor covering. God damn it. Against the, against the Eagles, even though they lost, but I'm surprised Doug Peterson didn't get fired. Like Dennis <laughs> Allen. Dude, you've been calling for Doug Peterson to get left in London to get left in fucking Philly. You yeah, you wanted to get left in Philly. You would have. You would. I'm not sure if you would have got murdered or uh. would have be given a house because that was the last time <laughs> he was the head coach and they won the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but all right, sounds good. We truck on. We truck on as we normally do here. So let's move on to off the numbers for this week, guys. So just for anyone who's not familiar, again, this is our weekly segment where we each each in each of us individually make a pick. Um, in the NFL, and we just kind of have a friendly competition um, and banter as as the season progresses here. So, I will I'll kick it off here since I'm the top dog in the NFL, baby. So far, I this week I'm running with the Niners minus five and a half. Didn't I have to admit my my kind of research or mental model with this one wasn't super crisp or in depth as it has been in the past. Um, so we'll see we'll see what it yields. But a couple a couple of general points on this one. Niners coming off a bye, huge rest advantage, 
um, Bucks playing Monday Night Football last night. So Bucks off six days of rest, Niners off a of bye. Um, Shanahan has generally performed well coming off a of bye um, in a standalone spot. Their Niners are still a top ten offense without Christian McCaffrey. Now, granted, I know they're down deep, or excuse me, they're down Ayuk. Um, and I don't know, is Debo out too? Did I did I miss that? Or did he come back? No, he was back from pneumonia. He beat it. <laughs> Kevin can't wait to get off the numbers. Yeah, shut out. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, so there's still a top 10 offense. All indications are that McCaffrey is going to be back this week, albeit on probably a limited snap count type of, type of thing. Um, Tampa Bay, aside from Washington, on the defensive side of the ball, they are the worst team in echo rate allowed. So they are they are letting teams drive and drive and drive on them and get to the 40-yard or better. Um, and San Francisco is, offensively speaking, only behind Washington in echo rate. So I, I, I just I, – I kind of a few things are lining up to me. You know, you got the rest advantage. You got the overall good defense, kind of mid-bad offense for, for the Bucks. So I'm like a Niners minus five and a half. Steve, what do you got? Oh, I got the Eagles minus seven against the Cowboys. And, you know, I, I don't know. I, I meant to look at this earlier. I don't know it's where, this, at, where this actually yeah. opened up at because uh, I kind of did this last minute. It's. Um, I think it technically opened at seven and a half. It, it, it technically opened at six and a half, but then the news came out, and I think the true reopen oh, okay. was yeah. seven and a half. Okay, I appreciate that because, yeah, I would have loved the six and a half even better, but I, I, don't, I don't mind the seven. This is, you know, this is part of the segment, you know, where you can keep your numbers nerds like this is going to be <laughs> divisional matchup and the Cowboys are an absolute free ball. dude. You've got you've got Dak on the on the, you know, the, the sideline, you know, getting caught lip, you know, lip reading. Oh, we fucking suck. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, hurt yeah. with a hamstring. C.D. Lamb's shoulders fell off. Ezekiel Elliott's getting benched for you know showing up late to practice and not Could you blame him? with the team. Yeah, no, no, I don't blame him at yeah, all. They fucking you suck. Jerry, Can you blame them? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got Jerry Jones, you know, you know talking bad about the team. Now, I, I do think they are going to get Micah Parsons back, which which would be huge. But th- this team is just the epitome of a dumpster fire. You throw in a um, you know a divisional matchup, and, and to be clear, I'm not high on the Eagles at all. But this is how low I am on the Cowboys. That I, I think I think that the minus seven in divisional play teams who hate each other. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. As cats on horses say, fade, 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 fade. And like we like to say, hate, 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 hate. hate, 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 hate. hate. So yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Okay. Yeah, I ran the numbers to today with with Russian there. We make the number seven. So <laughs> God bless. <laughs> um. Well, you got some advice we- though, Seth. Or, 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 what, what, what is the saints yeah they treat you badly <laughs> oh man they the fact they straight up lost yeah 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 to yeah. whatever the minus touch is right now you got it <laughs> well here we go baby shout out to all the steelers fans because i'm taking steelers money line uh, i think uh for all the reasons we talked about early in the show i i, I just think washington struggles against good defense Russ looks to be making moves, and and we talked about it. What do we see? We saw them make a move at the deadline for a wide receiver. Of all the wide receivers to trade for, I'm not sure why that's the one they went with for a fifth round pick. But but to me, that is a signal that they believe in this passing offense. They believe in this team. Um, they're trying to get Russ some more weapons there. So I don't think that'll play in the number this week. But um, I I do I do I'm I'm, I'm basically getting betting this um betting this on basically the defense i think pittsburgh's defense can slow wash okay what, no, what number did you get uh i haven't bet it yet so i okay probably, yeah, you i'm can gonna get, just take money line whatever yeah you can get plus 138 fan looks like the best out there okay. right now sure i'll take, okay. I'll take all right let's pull up the card let's pull up the recap just for just for the minutes all right there it is yeah four and two for me steve three and three and seth bringing hey, up hey, the caboose hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Got yeah, look, nice I've been close on a number of these. All right. Yeah. That's not even true. I don't think. I think I've actually just lo- just got my ass kicked. So no, you got, my... you got, you get, yeah. I know. You, I remember the one I only, the one I remember was the Saints because I, I, yeah. I secretly tell you because I like that pick. And if you had, I think you took spread. Taking you mo- had, no, you took money line if you had spread. Yeah, yeah, you card, yeah. Whatever, whatever it was. Yeah. 100%. Well, now, now, now everybody can understand the true origin of BTB. I was getting my ass kicked so much. 
and betting the shit with my brain. I was like, I can't do this. Anymore. I gotta get, I gotta get a model, man. Yes. All right. Shut up. Off the numbers, NFL Week 10. Let's go. All right. Last but not least, boys and girls, and appreciate you guys all in the chat commenting. Yes. Really, really great for us. Um, love, love the engagement. Don't forget to like the video, please. And don't forget if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. Helps us out a, a great deal. And we love to we love to keep the uh love to keep the content going for you guys. Okay, last but not least, model predictions for NFL week 10. Another another easy. decent, another decent size in terms of volume here. So model right now is 23 and 20. Um heading into week 10. Yep. So Seth, without further ado, let's rattle off real quick what we have for, for this week. Yep. We have six plays. So a pretty healthy card this week. We're on Houston plus three and a half. Jacksonville plus four and a half, Buffalo minus four and a half, Kansas City minus eight and a half, Chargers minus seven and a half, and Rams minus two. I think we all we gave we ended up giving out a two and a half because uh the twos were gone by this time. I was writing the email. So two and a half is fine as well if you can get it. I think it looks like it's headed to three. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, I mean another 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 week, another another fair volume. Um, Houston was a technically a, a late ad, but nonetheless. Well, it it but it it really it was it was there then actual, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, like when I was running the numbers, it was there, and then when I went to sign up the email, all of the th the three and a halfs got bought, and then for whatever reason today on Tuesday, all the th minus threes got bought, so it moved back to three and a half. So if we would have bet it on. Sunday night or Monday morning, we would just be in the same situation. So that's why we ended up betting it. So it's not it. It was late technically, but it really isn't late. That's what it opened at. Yeah, fair enough. So yeah, I mean, I think the only one, I think the only one. I mean, I guess, and I take that back. There's two now that I, yeah, that I feel personally gross about. It's both Jacksonville and Houston. Other mm -hmm. ones, other ones, mental model and model model kind of kind of line up in my in my head. But yeah, what about you guys? The, the Jags ones. That one is that one. Th there's no chance that wins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no chance, huh? I zero. <laughs> but can we can we can we just pause? Those? Is it this, if you guys who are new here, like this is what you don't get elsewhere. We talk about how. You have a bunch of those, uh, you know, the touts out there who scam and BS you all the time. You don't hear the honesty, right? And this is what this is what sports betting. This is what it looks like yeah. to try to do this, you know, in the professional manner where you're kind of throwing aside your mental model, and there are things you feel fucking gross about. Yeah, and this is one of them, right? Yeah, well, and and I think it's again we talk about this all the time. It's it's so difficult. You can throw out and you hear fifty five percent win rates. This is what it feels like. It means that in order to catch 55% of the good bets, you're going to have to bet on some horrible ones. And breaking news, that Jacksonville bet might still win, even though it fucking feels like it's a 0% chance. Like that, unfortunately, what is what a model does, it allows you to quantify things. Your brain won't even almost allow you to even contemplate. My brain would not allow me to contemplate that bet. <laughs> Same. Precisely. Precisely. So maybe for good we'll reason. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see where the chips fall. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's again, it's almost like Groundhog's Day sometimes on these things. Like we just every week there's one or two that we don't feel great about. But then, hey, yeah, know, we've seen CLV on Jacksonville. It's actually four at all the market makers. <clears> so <throat> that's what I'm saying. It's crazy. Exactly. It's crazy. Right. So. All right, boys. I think that'll do it for us. Appreciate everyone in the chat. Seth says zero percent chance. So that means it's a hammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. <laughs> Oh, uh, gotta love now, it. I have gotta bet it. it. I have bet it. I've bet all these, so you know, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why they say if you're not betting ugly, you're not winning. Yeah, I've actually never, I've, I've never heard that phrase to be honest, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, whoever said hey, that, you're right. I think hey, Michael quit. may have just made that up. That's a, that's a Michael. <laughs> hey, hey, you better trademark that now, Michael. Right? That's gonna be on the t shirt before <laughs> you're on the way. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> oh, hey, so can you remind me, do we have the um, not, not for this show, but um. Was it cats? Uh, yeah, cats on horses was asking about uh, Herbert and EPA for play. Do we still do the volatility uh, EPA charts? Uh, I don't have it on the website, but I I can run Points it at any time. Yeah. Okay. All Does right. he want to see it now? What is it? I didn't see that. Oh yeah, yeah. He was asking about what uh, Herbert's okay. EPA per play. Yeah. This this year. Oh well, I, here I can give us two things. So I have his right. Like I can give it to you right now. Um, oh, Herbert. Okay. 
for his at least 10 games, his EPA per play in the last 10 games, not very good. Negative 2.4 in his career. He is 3.7 points. Um, mm. I can run the, uh, I can run the, uh, volatility chart if, if, if everyone wants to hang out for a second yeah i think the epa i think that i think you answered it. but yeah it's, it's so like just subjectively and objectively definitely uh definitely a downfall yeah no problem cats on horses yeah definitely a downfall this year yeah yeah i mean this that team has been really interesting they they did pretty well against uh um, yeah. denver obviously then denver came back late in that game but they covered they obviously did the damn thing last week yeah, but they're they're running the ball and they're throwing the ball with okay efficiency. Yeah. Well, and, and what's wild too is they I think they were five and twelve last year and they're five and three so far. So Her Herbert has a, a down point, but you're Harbaugh, you're, the cor- the quarterback whisperer, John Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, but like as a team, who, you're who you know, you're winning at least as many games you won last year. So you know. Yeah, true. All right, guys. Appreciate it. It's been real. Again, thank you to everyone in the chat for engaging with us. It's another week in the books for NFL. So good luck to anyone if you're tailing, if you're a member. Hopefully you got some, hopefully you got the bets in early as well. But that'll do it for us. We'll be back next week as always. Happy Maction Day. Yeah. Um, and if you guys want, please uh, subscribe on this. We'll we'll put up the live stream uh, video or the the um yeah, the videos for next week. So you can go ahead and hit subscribe. So you get that notification the moment we go live. If you yep. love this, please come back. We love the banter. We love the chats. We want to hear what you guys are doing, ask some questions. So the more you come back, the more we love it. All right. Hold on before we go, since I, I just ran it in between. So da, 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 we, da, da, da. we can give Rookie we news. can give in time value. <laughs> um, All right. Pull it up. Make it look I'm make trying, it look I'm sexy. Trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna have to help me find him. Who? Uh, what's his name again? Uh, Herbert. Justin Herbert. Oh yeah, right below uh, Stafford. Yeah, there you go. While you're there you go. Yeah. So he's a little bit better in the, in the nine game sample than in the ten game sample. So that'll which will next game will be yeah fully this season. So, but he's he's technically in the quadrant of elite. Technically, yeah. You want to be in the bottom right in this. Yeah, you want to be here. The problem is this is a very fine line. So you go from <laughs> here to here. It means that you're kind of like consistently shitty. So he's yeah. he's just teetering basically what I would call consistently average. He's mm-hmm. got room for improvement. He's going to do it this week. Tighten. Damn straight. Yeah. Tighten damn up, maybe. straight. Or t- not tighten up. Tighten down, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Loosen up. Ugh. All right, boys. <laughs> That's it. I think we're off the rails almost at this point. So, yeah. All right, guys. It's been real. Appreciate everyone hanging out. We'll be back next week. Until then. Good night. Good luck. See you. Take care.